Roman Griffin here again from Roman Review with more of a more of a technical standpoint of Richard Price's lush life, more of a let's call it a writing from a writing standpoint. And um, I mentioned in the other review that his his use of colloquial language in the dialogue fails miserably because you do not know what the characters are saying. It's all great that he did his research and everything. We're all very impressed, Richard, but it doesn't do anything to carry a story along, especially when you rely on dialogue so much to carry a story. But there are, one of the main problems is, is his, his use of his language to tell the story as a narrator. Um, he loves adverbs, for one. Loves the adverbs. Like, for instance, there is a, there is a line of people that block an entrance. And instead of just saying that the line of people, and I remember, this is a book about street life. However, he's going to sit there and tell you that the line was uh, going across the storefront of this one place and it solidly, solidly and obliviously blocked the entrance. It didn't just block the entrance, but you had to throw in these two adverbs, solidly and obliviously block the entrance. I think we could have done without that. We get the idea. The entrance is blocked. Solidly and obliviously doesn't really do anything for us. It doesn't add anything to that whole um, description. Another one is that what's kind of funny is he's talking about the, the line that is blocking the entrance to the place. He's talking about the people who are in the line. And it says the people were <laughs> not, not <laughs> the people, the line didn't overwhelmingly consist of Latino people. However, the people were o overwhelmingly Latino. <laughs> so it's like, holy shit, you're really Latino. Oh my God. There, you, you don't, you can't get more Latino than you. You are overwhelmingly, are you, what are you like, what are you like 140% Latina? It looks like it. Overwhelmingly Latino. I, I'm not trying to start a fight with you, buddy, but Wow. Anyhow, <laughs> so the people were overwhelmingly Latino. That, that was good. Caballo soda? Anyhow. Um, now, once again, street book, street kids, street thugs. However, two of the guys who work at the place that has the entrance blocked, um, they cut through the line to get to work, to get into work, to get to the, into the front door. Does he say that they cut through the line? No. Here's what they did. They successfully breached the procession. This is what I'm talking about. You have to pick a spot here, Dickie. You can't sit there and say, we're badass street people. I'm the king of badass dialogue. And then say that two of these kids successfully breached the procession. You have to say they cut through the line or they busted through the line. Stick with what you think you're trying to do. Don't sit there and tell me that they successfully breached the line. They just cra you know, crashed through it to get to work. This is what I mean how this book does not add up properly. And what, here's, here's more adverbs for you. He, he'd been feeling amorphously anxious. We always hear that on the street. You have to match your narration with the street book. Don't sit there and try to be Charles Dickens and, I don't know, Flava Flav? <laughs> no. Cool Mo D? I'm, go I'm really going back now, aren't I? Here's another one. His eyes like two cherries floating in buttermilk. What the hell are you talking about? First of all, who the hell has ever seen two cherries floating in buttermilk? And if you have seen it, uh, you know, I'm not, we can't even get into it. What the hell is that? Two cherries floating in buttermilk. Does nothing for me. But that's about it, just for the highly technical standpoint, but he uses sentences that are way too long. They're, they're, one paragraph is one sentence long. Not a good thing. It taxes the reader. The reader already doesn't know what the hell's going on because of this wonderful dialogue. Also, these long sentences that are a paragraph long, 
you need a break. You need to give the reader a rest. And it does not do the, any justice to your story whatsoever here. If there is a story, I'm not sure there is one. The, uh, he uses the colon often. He'll start a sentence, put a colon, and then just start listing things. Like almost whole sentences after a colon. I don't get that either. I call it the laundry list effect, or you can call it the Dick and Jane effect, whatever you want to do, but it sucks is what it does. So the story, if there is one, is not told properly. You have a lot of just adverbs that just clunk it all up. The dialogue, you're not going to understand it. You need subtitles. So there's a lot of things wrong with the book that technically it, it should be tuned in, but I, I guess, you know, nobody really is the editor or Dickie Price didn't feel like... Uh, really taking the time out to do it. So there are your problems for this book.